On August 21st, 2017, less than three days from now, Vishnu is going to behead Rahu. Viking wolves are going to chase the sun across the sky, but a giant frog is going to get there first and swallow it whole. The sky is going to go dark in the middle of the day, like Apollo has ridden his chariot into a basement garage. Zombie apocalypse, children being snatched up by demons, science deniers in the White House. And all over the country, people will be stabbing index cards with little holes and squinting at them. That's right, folks, we're going to have a total solar eclipse. The moon's going to kick the sun's butt in the celestial octagon for several spectacular minutes. Now, over the centuries, there have been lots of beliefs about eclipses. What I believe is that an eclipse is mind-blowingly cool. If you talk to people who've seen eclipses, you'll find that the, they tell you the emotional surge that you feel is just incredible. It's like falling in love or meeting your newborn child or occasionally really good sex. <laughs> it's something that you feel with all your body. It's, it's a multi-sensual experience. It's not something that's just visual. But people don't understand why they're rare. Actually, eclipses are not particularly rare. As, a, as the whole planet goes, we get an eclipse somewhere on the planet almost every year. But you only get to see it from a small per portion of the Earth. Although we get an eclipse almost every year, only those people who are most dedicated, who are willing to go all over the world to see it, and most of the world is really hard to get to. Now, when we get an eclipse, it's because the moon comes between the Earth and the sun, and it blocks out the sun, but only for a very small fraction of the Earth. Only about 0.1% of the Earth will see each total solar eclipse. That's a thousandth of the Earth. So even though it happens nearly once a year, the chances of it being your bit of the planet Pretty slim. So what I'd like to do is talk about what you're going to get to see during the eclipse. The moon starts to move in front of the sun, and at first it looks like a tiny little bite out of the sun. And for the first hour, if you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't even notice that anything was going on, except that there might be a few weird shadows on the trees. But you get about an hour in, and the sun is now about three quarters covered up, and the sky changes color. And it's getting darker, but it's subtle. It's like the sky just after sunset, but before nightfall. And for the next 20 or 30 minutes, as the moon is moving more and more over the sun, the sky stays that twilight color. And then, as the moon moves fully in place in front of the sun, boom, it's full moon dark. We are plunged into darkness. The sun is blotted out from the sky. This is it. This is totality. How long you get? in darkness depends on where you're standing in the path of totality, which is my heavy metal band name. Um, for, for this particular eclipse, you might get up to two and a half minutes or so. But, you know, the moon, the earth, and the sun, they continue their dance, and the sun starts to peek out around the edge of the moon, and we see another partial eclipse, and we see more and more of the sun until eventually the moon is out of the way and the sun is whole again. I'd like to concentrate on what happens during totality. We get to see the sun's tenuous atmosphere. It is this wispy gas. It's a beautiful thing, and it's very pale. It's only about as bright as the full moon, and the only time we can see it is during the eclipse. Some people find it frightening. It looks like a hole in the sky with these wispy things around it, and you can think of that as being, yeah, that would be a bit weird, but it's safe. It's no more dangerous than looking at the full moon. And it's there all the time. The atmosphere is always there, but it's normally hidden in plain sight. The sun is a million times brighter than the full moon or the corona. And so, because it's a million times brighter, even when there's only a thousandth of the sun showing, that means that it's a thousand times brighter than the corona or the full moon. And we just can't see it. But this picture doesn't do it justice. 
You know, when you take a picture in a darkish room and you look at that picture, you lose the details in the dark corners. Your eyes see all the details, but the photograph doesn't show them. Well, the same is true of photographing the corona. So what it really looks like when you look at it is more like this. Now, this is about as bright as the full moon. And if it's as bright as the full moon and it's that dark, we get to see other things too. We get to see stars. Aren't they pretty? Stars. Sorry. Um, now, we get to see stars at night, but in August, we don't normally get to see the constellation Leo. It's hidden behind the sun. So now we're getting to see the constellation Leo. Looking at this, that front paw of Leo the lion is a star called Regulus. For the Harry Potter fans in the audience, yes, that Regulus. It is Sirius Black's brother. And if you look down and to the uh, horizon, to the southwest, you're going to find Sirius too. But even more than that, if you look a little further west on the horizon, you see Orion, one of the most recognizable constellations in the sky. The shoulder opposite Betelgeuse is Bellatrix. So we actually get to see quite a bit of the Black family tree during the eclipse. <laughs> As well as seeing constellations and stars, we also see some planets. If you look slightly up and to the west of the sun, you're going to find Venus. Venus will be the brightest thing in the sky that's not the corona. Down towards the southeastern horizon, you can see Jupiter. And then if you look in a little closer towards the sun, you'll see Mars and Mercury, a little fainter, but still visible. Now, if you look down towards the horizon, you'll see that the sky is getting lighter. That's real. I want you to imagine that you're driving towards the horizon and you're seeing the sun has just set, you're seeing those just after sunset colors on the horizon. But behind you to the east is already black. Well, now on the day of the eclipse, when the sun is totally covered, you will see those colors that you see in the western horizon all the way around, all 360 degrees of the horizon will be those after sunset colors. And it will get darker as you look up towards the eclipsed sun. But it's more than that. It's not just a visual experience. Imagine on a nice hot day, a cloud moves in front of the sun, you have that pleasant coolness. And it's really nice because the cloud got in the way. But a cloud doesn't stop the light getting to the ground. It just moves it around a bit. The moon stops the light getting to the ground. It gets colder. It can be colder by 10 degrees during totality. And that change in temperature can also make wind. There will be breezes and air currents coming in. Another thing that happens during the total eclipse is that animals are going to start to react. Actually, they start even before we get to totality, when the sky goes to those twilight colors. The birds start doing their twilight song and dance. But when it goes dark, they all land and go quiet. Cows go back to the barn because they think it's bedtime. Whales and dolphins come up to the surface. All sorts of animals will do all sorts of different behaviors because of the eclipse. Plants, too. We have plants that close up at night, and those plants are going to behave differently because of the change in light during the eclipse. Now, I'd like to back up for a second and talk about what happens just before we get to totality. On the right, you can see, you can still see the sun. And as we move left, you can see less and less of the sun. You can see some bumps and wiggles right there as the moon is moving into place. The moon is not a perfectly smooth orb. The moon is, it's got craters, it's got mountains, it's got valleys, and that's what we're seeing. The last part of the sun that you see is peeking through one of those valleys. But this doesn't do it justice. What it really looks like is this. This is the diamond ring. The diamond is where there's still just a little bit of sunlight coming through a valley, but we're starting to see the corona because the rest of the sun is blocked out. But the moon is moving up and to the right, and as it does, that diamond dwindles and shrinks and disappears, and then it's totality. And that is the only time it is safe for you to look at the sun without any protection. If you want to look at any of the partial phase or the sun on any other day, you must protect your eyes. But during totality, it's only as bright as a full moon, and it is safe. But the heavens keep moving, the moon is gonna keep moving up and to the right, and so we're going to get another diamond ring where there's a valley in the lower left, and we'll get our second diamond ring. So we get two diamond rings that 
come either side of totality. And during totality, you're going to have up to two and a half minutes. And in that time, you want to look at the corona and the stars and the planets and the black family tree. And I may call jet, and is there a breeze? And what are the animals doing? What are the plants doing? And, and then it's over. <laughs> so I've talked about totality, but actually the entirety of the US gets to see a total eclipse. Up in Chicago, they're going to get 90% of the sun disappear. Up in Maine, they're going to get almost 50% of the sun disappear. But if you want to see the things that I have shown you today, you have to be in the path of totality. If you are at 99.9% .9 eclipsed, there's still a thousandth of the sun showing. It's still a thousand times brighter than the full moon. The sky does not go dark. You do not see the corona or the stars or the planets. At 100% eclipse, you get the whole show. At 99.9%, .9%, it's a pale imitation. So if you want to see this whole show, you want to get to totality and see the whole shebang, because where you stand matters. Thank you.